In this lecture, let's have a look at various elements in the JSP file. Number one is the static content. These are the lines of code you would have written for HTML, CSS, JavaScript within your JSP. And all the lines will be converted into a series of out.write statements inside the resulting Java code. So they will not be processed in the server side. Instead, they will be sent back to the client and the browser will handle the same. But the most important ones are the scripting elements, which allow us to write Java code inside a JSP. There are three types of scripting elements, scriptlets, declarations, and expressions. A scriptlet is a code inside a special bracket, which starts from less than percent and ends with percentage greater than. The Java code you write here will become part of the service function of the resulting Java code. Hence, it has access to all the implicit objects. The implicit objects are a bunch of standard Java objects such as request, response, out, session, etc. Inside the scriptlet, you can declare variables, you can use if conditions, you can use for loops, etc. But you cannot write additional functions or classes because it is as if you are writing a, a function or a class inside a service function, so which is why it is not allowed. The second scripting element is the declarations block, which is also a Java code written inside a special bracket. The bracket starts with a less than percentage exclamation and it ends with a percentage greater than symbol. But the Java code you write here becomes part of the resulting Java class and not part of the service function, which means you cannot write for loop or if conditions directly because then it looks like you're writing a for loop or an if condition directly inside the class. So declaration block is generally preferred to use when you want to declare a member variable or a function or a nested class or a static block. Since the code you write in the declaration block is not part of the service function, you don't have access to any of the implicit objects inside the declaration block. Most common use cases are to write lifecycle functions such as JSP init and JSP destroy. The third scripting element is called expressions. And then expressions is also a substitute for some code that goes into the service function. Expressions are generally used for printing the value of a variable or a return value of a function. Or if you have some expressions and you want to print that on the HTML, you can use the expressions. Now expression have a simple syntax, less than percentage equals, and then you give the expression, then close the bracket using percentage greater than. Expressions have access to all the implicit objects because they are part of the service function. Apart from the scripting elements, which is the major part of your JSP, you have something called directives. Now, if you're from C programming background, you know something called as a preprocessor directive, which tell the compiler before actually it starts the compilation. Likewise, the directives instruct the JSP translator before it can begin the translation of the JSP into Java, they can affect the actual source code of the JSP itself. So a directive basically has the syntax of less than percentage at followed by name of the directive and then a bunch of attributes in the form of key value pairs. The most commonly used directives are page, include and taglib. A page basically controls the appearance of the page. For example, if you want to import some packages other than java.lang, Additionally, you can control the page encoding, whether a session object is required or not. In case if there was an exception in a JSP page where it should be redirected to, all those things are controlled using the page. But the most common use of the page directive is for importing classes from other packages. The include directive is used for including any text file within your application, while the page directive can be given anywhere in the JSP file. The include directive, because it includes the content of the other files, the placement of include is very important. Because the inclusion of other files happen even before the actual translation begins, many of the occasions this is called as a static includes. And the third most commonly used directive is the tag lib directive. As the name suggests, it represents tag library. The tags we are talking about here are nothing but the JSP tags, which are not the HTML tags, so they can't be processed by the browser. So the tags are going to be processed in the JSP engine itself. But in order to refer to any tags provided by third party, we have to use this 
tag lib directive. So general syntax is you say tag lib and then URI equals to give a namespace representing all the tags and then a prefix to refer to the tags. So the next JSP element is called JSP actions. They're actually called actions because they perform some actions, but behind the scene, they're nothing but JSP tags. There are two types, standard actions, which are standardized by Java community process. And the second one is custom actions. Now the standard actions, you don't have to include any additional jar files or any tag libraries. You can simply start using the JSP standard tags using the JSP as the prefix. Most of the times we don't have any real requirements of this in the modern JSP. Custom actions are actions or JSP tags created by developers. Hence it's called custom because we are customizing our own actions. These allow us to create a Java class and use the Java class as a tag. In the initial days of JSP, a framework called Apache Struts provided a lot of tags which are meant for programming purposes. For example, if you want a for loop, instead of writing a scriptlet and write a for loop, you can actually use a JSP tag. They look like HTML tags. So you use a tag to repeat over a collection. During those days, Apache struts became very popular. And in the next version of JSP, which is JSP 2.0, they introduced a bunch of tags called JSTL. Because we are writing applications on Apache Tomcat 9, which supports JSP 2.0, your JSP can also have expression language or EL for short, and then JSTL. So these are the additional two elements of a JSP, which completely replace writing of scriptlets, declarations, expressions within our JSP. An expression language has a very simple syntax of dollar and a curly bracket. And as the name suggests, you write some expressions there. For example, accessing the value of a variable or uh, probably property of an object or ternary operator like question mark colon combination. JSTL is the JSP standard tag library, which allows us to do a lot of things using JSP tags, which otherwise we would have done using scriptlets, declarations and expressions. In the subsequent lectures, we will have a detailed look into expression language as well as JSTL.